Welcome to Greenhorn Linux. Linux for Greenhorns. On this episode of Greenhorn Linux, Adam shows you how to install VirtualBox in the Windows operating system. Wow, can a computer really run two operating systems at the same time? What kind of magic is this? Yes, it's true, you can run two operating systems at the same time. Now keep in mind, this usually requires a much beefier system. Uh, and the guest operating system is not going to be nearly as fast when compared to doing a full-blown installation to your physical hard drive. Uh, but this is a great way for testing out software, and it's also a great way to get accustomed to a different operating system. Uh, I use this all the time for kind of sandboxing so I don't touch my regular operating system. So I recommend, in order to pull this off, uh, at least dual-core uh, processors. Uh, and 4 gigs of RAM uh, is usually a minimum. Of course, you could always try this with lower specs. You just may not like the results that you get. So with all this in mind, uh, let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do this uh, in Windows 7 as the host operating system. So once again, I've booted into Windows 7. And I guess I should probably explain what I mean by host versus guest. So the host operating system is the operating system that is not being run in VirtualBox. So obviously in this case, uh, Windows 7 is my host. The guest operating system, as you've probably just guessed, is the operating system that is being run in VirtualBox. So what we're going to do is you're going to start up your web browser, and then we're going to go to virtualbox.org. Once you get to the main site, we are going to click here on the left-hand side, Downloads. And then we need to find the right executable or binary for whatever our host uh, operating system is. And in this case, it's going to be Windows 7. Uh, you can see you could run a Linux host. You could run uh, OS 10 host. And honestly, um, as I alluded to in the beginning of the video, I do this under Linux. So Linux will be my host operating system. And then I'll have a Linux guest operating system. And this is great for testing out software and kind of uh, sandboxing from my main Linux install. So. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you're running 64-bit or 32-bit, this will automatically download the correct uh, executable. But if you are ever curious, uh, this is just a quick free tip. Go to Start under where you can do your search, type in uh, RAM, um, and then this will bring up a little utility. And then right here uh, under System, it tells you a whole bunch of information. And then you can see System Type 64-bit uh, operating system. So I am actually running the 64-bit Windows 7 operating system. So what we're going to do is we're just going to click the executable. And we're going to save it to our hard drive. At the time of this recording, we are looking at version 4.1.14. So just save that to your hard drive and wait for it to download. Okay, and once that's finished downloading, bring up uh, Windows Explorer. Go to the directory where you saved the executable. In my case, it's uh, Adam Downloads. And then we're just going to go through the install. Now, obviously, you have to be a system administrator to be able to install software. And then we're just going to go through the install. So here we're going to click Run. Okay, and then this is just a guided setup. So we're going to click Next. Uh, this is what uh, stuff you want installed, uh, how much support you want. Um, I just do the default. Uh, you can even say where you want to save this. This is like a normal install. I'm just going to leave everything as default. Uh, if you want a shortcut to the desktop, uh, pick whatever you want. This is just a warning. Um, the network is going to temporarily go down just because it is going to be installing software to your network. Um, just say install. At this point, some prompts will come up saying, do you want to allow this to change? Programs, yes. And again, another prompt will come up, just say install. And another one. And another one. And another one. Okay, and eventually everything should have went well. Um, I'm not going to start this at the moment, but uh, just click finish. Okay, and then we're going to launch VirtualBox. So in the beginning, it's going to look pretty blank. We're going to click New. I'm not going to install a new operating system to it today. That'll be next week, so I don't want this video to be too long. But we are going to prep it for the install. So at this point, we are creating a spot on our hard drive um, that will allow us to install a guest operating system. So you can call this whatever you want. Uh, you can call it the operating system. I'm just going to call this Test for now. Uh, if you want it to be more descriptive. Uh, we're going to pick uh, a Linux, and um, 
you know, whatever whatever Linux you want. Um, I guess we'll just do Ubuntu, be more of the standard. In fact, maybe I'll just label this Ubuntu for now. And then we're going to click Next. So here, and you can change all these settings later, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, I have 8 gigs of RAM. I'm just going to put it to probably 3, about approximately 3 gigs. Uh, of RAM. Um, and then here we need to create uh, a virtual hard disk. So we're going to create a new one. I'm just going to use the default uh, VDI, that's the virtual box disk image. And then at this point we have to decide if we want it to be dynamically allocated or fixed size. So dynamically allocated, that basically means as you start installing software on your virtual machine, uh, the hard drive will expand with it. The downside is it tends to be a little bit slower. Um, I prefer fixed size, but that's just me. The downside to fixed size is that you kind of have to have a better guess of how big you need the hard drive to be. So pick whatever one you want. I'm going to go fixed size. And uh, 8 gigs seems to be fine. Um, this is the location of where you want to save this onto your hard drive. Uh, I'm just going to leave it in the default, that's fine. Um, so you can save this anywhere, you can save it on an external, wherever you want to save this. Uh, so this is where mine is being saved, and then click Next. And then this will take some time to create, and just click Create. Okay, and once your, hard, your virtual hard disk is created, just say Create. And now we're brought back to the main menu. Okay, and then once that's all done, you should come back to the main area. And this is our pretty much ready to roll out uh, uh, newly created disk space. And we will have to install an operating system to this area, but again, that'll be next week. But I did want to show you some settings where you can change some stuff, even though we've already kind of went through the settings. Uh, you can always, if you don't like the settings or something's not working out for you, you can always change them later on, which is really, really nice. So if you want, you could change the name. Uh, if you wanted to, you it, like let's say later on you decided that Ubuntu wasn't something you wanted to try or you wanted to try Arch Linux, you could always uh, switch that out. Um, under this tab, this is where all your snapshots are saved. So you could roll back, you can take snapshots of your uh, virtual machine and then you could roll uh, stuff back. Uh, you can write descriptions. Uh, under system, this is where you can change the amount of memory dedicated to your uh, virtual box machine. And so like for example, let's say you realize you've given too much memory to the virtual box, you can change this to a lower number. Uh, let's say you feel that you're always running out of memory in your virtual box, but your uh, host operating system feels like it has enough, you can always up that. Uh, the chipset and stuff I really don't understand, so I just leave it as the default because I don't want to mess around with stuff. But um, later on, you could read the manual, figure out uh, maybe there are better ways to gain a little bit more speed out of your virtual box. If you had a processor, um, eh, you know what? I'll change this to to two core. Um, but you can see right there it says non-optimal settings detected, so I guess I'll switch that back. Um, if you go under acceleration. Uh, VirtualBox seems to do a pretty good job of picking the correct default stuff. Um, I will change my, I have plenty of video memory, I'm going to change this to 128. Uh, it may be lower for you. Um, and I'm also going to check enable 3D acceleration. Uh, this will be important for Ubuntu so I can uh, see the 3D effects. If you don't check this, it'll automatically just go to the 2D Ubuntu, which is fine. But uh, if you want more 3D acceleration in your VirtualBox, check that. And then you can look at uh, storage, um, the audio, you can change settings. Again, I'm just going to leave everything as the default. Uh, you can do some fancy stuff with your network adapter. Um, again, I'm just going to leave it as the defaults. Uh, under USB, if you want the virtual box to detect a external USB, uh, you can set that up. I'm not going to go into that uh, for this video. Um, and shared folders. So if you want access to all of your data in the virtual box, you can also set that up. So this is uh, basically where all your settings are, and you can always come back after you've installed the operating system and change stuff around. I should also note that if you, you're not just limited to one virtual box or, or one operating system. So like, let's say I wanted to run Ubuntu, I also wanted to run Arch Linux, and I wanted another one. Um, I can create as many as I want. The only disadvantage is, again, it's going to create, uh, it's going to use up lots of disk space, but the nice thing is you're not even limited to just one uh, virtual machine. You can set up as many as you want. You can try out as many operating systems as you want, and basically what will happen is if I add more, this list will just increase. So 
a fantastic way to try out different operating systems and get a flavor of what you may want to use as your main OS. Okay, I think this is a good place to stop for now. Uh, next week, we will actually install an operating system inside VirtualBox. As always, thanks for watching, and be sure to check out my website, greenhornlinux.com. Catch you later.